So Bill Maher had Elon Musk on his show. And I have to say, I mean, Bill Maher has been um, not my favorite commentator for quite a while now. But even I was surprised at the level he was fawning here. Like, he was truly, truly smitten. He was, like, salivating and drooling and just... It, it's amazing to me. Because Bill Maher, I have many, many issues with him. But the dude, like, reads and follows the news and knows what's going on. Even if I don't agree with his take on it, his opinion on it, he has the basic information. So what you're going to see here is a guy who flat out disregarded and ignored the literally, what, 28 different stories showing mistakes Elon has made or Elon's hypocrisy or goofy stuff. He just ignores all that to basically give him a smooth hand job live on air. So let's watch some of it, and we'll break it down as we go. Uh, I'm warning you. I'm warning you. This is... <clears throat> this is not pretty. My first guest is the man who made electric cars a thing and is currently working on perfecting reusable rockets, space travel, connecting the human brain directly to computers, connecting cities with electromagnetic bullet trains, the Starlink satellite system that's so important to the war in Ukraine, and then on Tuesday... <laughs> He's going to work on that tunnel thing on traffic. He also tweets a lot. Elon Musk. Right here. I just want to pause here to um, plug something, which helps, like, kind of refute that whole goofiness from Mar. Go type into YouTube Thunderfoot Elon Musk and then watch his videos. He's done so many. I mean, there's more than I can count, right? Where he really does a deep dive into claims Elon makes Here's this product I'm going to make. Here's how I'm going to save the world. Here's how I'm going to do this. Here's how I'm going to do that. And then he gives a timeline for it. By this date, we're going to do this. And then he doesn't deliver on almost any of it. Any of it. Didn't a SpaceX rocket just blow up like this past week? And then Mar talks to him and he's like, you're saving the world, bro. You never made any mistakes about anything ever, bro. Remember, it went viral, this thing. He was on a show, like, 11 or 12 years ago, and he said, in 10 years, I'll have our first people on Mars. We've already blown by the deadline, and it's not like he's like, hey, man, we're, fuck, two months away, we're almost... No, he clearly overpromised and underdelivered. And so exactly what you see is going on right now with the how disastrous the Twitter changes have been, it's been like this with so many of his endeavors. And Mar just ignores all of that. So again, Thunderfoot Elon Musk, enjoy watching a thorough debunking of this myth that has been created of Elon Musk as the amazing genius who's solving all the world's problem and is not at all a hypocrite or fraudulent whatsoever. Did I get the uh, full order of things that you do in a day there? When I was reading there, I left out the tunnel thing at the end. Um, uh, do, you, do you work on yeah, all these A lot of jobs. Do you do all these things every day? Do you work on all of them in a single day? No. No. Uh, but I do have, <laughs> I do have a long work day. Um, yeah. So I work a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so thrilled you're here because, you know, we do a show where we talk about what changes happen in the world, and, but we just talk. There's a very few people who actually make change happen. You are one of those people, probably. <laughs> So it's just been nonstop fawning praise so far. Um, you know, I just want to say I, I just want to say I love this audience. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, well, you're a likable guy. I mean, Thanks. I mean, I they mean, yeah. they attack. Likable guy to who? Remember when he went on stage at that comedy show, and I think what was it? Chappelle brought him out or something, and he got mass rounds of boo, boo. Likeable to you, dude, I'm telling you, there's some people that are just like old white man kryptonite. <laughs> Donald Trump is one of them, and Elon Musk is another. To be fair to Elon, I'm sure he's got plenty of fans, like 20-some-odd-year-old fans, right? But it, there's, it's, it, you don't see many, like, female Elon Musk simps, do you? I just want to say I, I, Or Trump simps, for that matter. I just want to say I love this audience. <laughs> <laughs> well, you... <laughs> Well, you're a likable guy. I mean, Thanks. I mean, they, I mean yeah. they attack you a lot. They do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you seem to laugh it off, which I think is fantastic. I yeah. love it that you have a sense of... So are you going to are you going to address any of the criticisms of them? And who's they? Who's they? 
Who exactly are we talking about here that who attacks Elon Musk? I can tell you some people who quote unquote attacked Elon Musk by pointing out facts. People like Matt Binder and Ken Klippenstein who reported on the fact that Elon Musk was, oh, I'm bringing back free speech to Twitter, bro. I'm bringing back free speech to Twitter. Anyway, mass bannings, mass censorship. There was just a story about how Elon Musk is working with the Indian government, a Hindu nationalist far-right government, to censor and block stuff that they don't want on the platform there. But free speech, free speech, free speech. Unless the Indian government comes to me and tells me I gotta start censoring people, in which case I'll censor them and I'll pretend like I'm not even doing that. It, like, it, it, and, oh God. I, I gotta, I gotta save it and let them talk more. Because a guy as important as you who makes changes yeah. could use your powers for evil and not good. The fact yeah, that- the absolutely. You could. <laughs> I would, of course, I would, yeah, never use them for evil. That's no, I crazy. know. But, uh, <laughs> but the way I know that is because you have a sense of humor. Uh, yeah. You really do. I you like, do. Yeah, yeah, you like- So the way that I know you can't, you're not doing anything bad. You're not doing anything wrong. You're not doing anything evil is because you're funny. By the way, funny to who? He makes like 14-year-old Reddit jokes. He loves joking about 420 and 69, which by the way, look, I'm no angel here. I got a dumbass sense of humor too, but I realize I'm kind of corny, right? Whereas he thinks like he's actually funny. And you got a comedian here, Bill Maher, telling him, that's how I know you're not doing anything wrong is because you make like fart jokes and stuff, bro. Bro, Bill Maher, drop the dick, please. Let it go. Let it go. Laughing, you like to be I, funny. I, mean, I kill me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, as opposed to some- Two minutes and 13 seconds in, and we've had nothing but like, you're amazing, I love you so much. Be <laughs> like Zuckerberg, who I'm not even sure is a real boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, mean, I, 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 I actually love comedy, and, and uh, I should, you know, like, um, Many years ago, I actually was in the audience here and watched your show. Oh, so really? I've been a long time uh, admirer of your show. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> <I> <laughs> <laughs> Let me get back to you being a genius. Okay. So, <laughs> but that has always been my view, is that as a, I was a history major. And when you study great. history, what you realize is that, you know, there's the great man theory, and they talk about kings and princes and queens and presidents. It's really the people in tech who change the world. They're the people who deal the cards. Uh, whether it's fire or electricity, or, for good or bad, or the cotton gin, or the iPhone, or the atom bomb, mm -hmm. those. D just a thought. What about all the people who do the back-breaking work that keeps the country going? What about them? What about that? You have any thoughts on them? Also, by the way, what about people who bring about mass political change that has nothing at all to do with technology? Was Martin Luther King being one of the most admired Americans and one of the greatest heroes of our time? What does that have to do with technology? Like, what are you saying? What's that guy's name to all my Canadians? Put it in the comment section. What's the name of the dude in Canada who's beloved, who brought you guys your universal healthcare system? Like, this idea, like, I'm not saying there are no big breakthroughs in tech and it's not like some, you know, inventors or whatever are not the people who are, uh, you know, helping us move forward. Of course, there are plenty of them, but there's plenty that are not them. This, like, great man theory of history, it's, it's, it's absolutely childish. Cards, and the rest of us just play it. Would you agree with that assessment? Uh, I, th I think technology is the thing that uh, causes these big step changes in, in civilization. So, uh, obviously, you've got things like, say, the Gutenberg Press, um, before which uh, right. it was very difficult to get books. They were yes. very rare, e even if you... Look, this part is true, but also there's colossal downside, too, right? Like... When we, when we uh, made the nuclear bomb, it's like that was a huge technological breakthrough. But also then we incinerated, what, hundreds of thousands or millions of Japanese civilians and brought about, ushered in this uh, very unstable situation moving forward where basically any, like, developed government or well-funded government can end humanity with, like, whatever, six or seven well-placed bombs. So, I mean, these things, it's a double-edged sword. Everybody knows that. The thirst for knowledge, you really couldn't do anything about it because um, there were very few books to read. So, uh, and the, the internet is something beyond, beyond the good book press, I think. But, you know, it, it's, it's a... Uh, when I first saw the internet uh, coming into being in a way that, that the general public could use it, it felt like the, the, the humanity as a whole was uh, developing a nervous system. So, previously, uh, the way the information would travel would be by osmosis, one person to another, or one person calling another. Um, but uh, 
you didn't, the access to information was very limited. Now, with the internet, it's like having a nervous system. It's like any part of, of humanity has access to almost all the information of humanity. Hmm. Like you could be in the, in the middle of the Amazon jungle uh, with, a, say, a Starlink terminal and have access to more uh, information uh, than the president did in 1980. Right. Well, anything on your phone. E everything. Is, uh, yeah. Okay. So, so you are one of these dealers, these people who deal the cards. In I deal some memes, too. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> some, uh... <laughs> um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think a lot of people thought when you bought Twitter that this is kind of an outlier. Like, how does this, what doesn't fit with sure. these other things you're doing? I never thought that. Oh, because yeah. I think you're dealing with big civilizational issues and problems, and I <laughs> was right on your page. I think Twitter is one of them. I mean, you have talked about this yeah. woke mind virus. Oh, God. Oh, God, here we go. All right. Yes. In, in really apocalyptic terms. Yeah. I don't, you should explain why you don't think it's hyperbole to say things like it's pushing civilization towards suicide. First of all, what is the woke mind virus? And if we don't deal with this, nothing else can get done. <laughs> Tell me why you think that. Yeah. I can't imagine having your brain be so fried by internet garbage that this is brought up as one of the first issues to you. Pfft, nothing can change until we get rid of the woke mind virus, bro. Let me ask you guys a question. What's a bigger problem? The quote-unquote woke mind virus or corruption? Scratch that. Let's go deeper. The woke mind virus or capitalism? What's a bigger problem? We have three people with more wealth than the bottom 50%. More income and wealth inequality than the literal gilded age. And the main thing you're bringing is the woke mind virus. The woke mind virus. That's not, the, And these guys pointed out for like corporations. Oh, the corporations have, are infected with the woke mind virus. Yeah, they also have totally bought our political system and rig all the rules and the laws in their favor. They've also made it so that we have an economic crash like every decade or two. They've also made it so that the tax code, you know, billionaires pay a lower tax rate than working class people. Don't you think these are bigger problems? Don't you think it's a bigger problem that 45,000 people die in the U.S. because they don't have health care? Don't you think over 500,000 homeless people is a bigger problem? Don't you think wages stagnating since the literal 1980s is a bigger problem? Don't you think colossal restrictions on basic freedoms, like the drug war, for example, isn't that a bigger problem? Don't you think the fact that we incarcerate more than every other country, isn't that a bigger problem? The woke mind virus. So there's a couple pink-haired college kids who want to censor people, and that's a bigger problem. Well, I'm more concerned with Elon Musk's censorship. All right, I'm going to get back to that in a second. Let's let them rock. So um, I think we need to be very cautious about any, anything that is anti-meritocratic um, and anything that is... Uh, that, that results in the suppression of, of free speech. He's acting like he didn't just ban over a dozen journalists. What was it, three months ago, four months ago? Remember when you had a bunch of journalists from major publications reporting on the fight between the Elon Jet account and Elon? Now, Elon said, look, I believe in free speech so much, I'm going to let this dude rock the Elon Jet thing. You know, the jet is public information, so he's just posting the public information. I might not like it, but it's not doxing because it's already public. That's the way it works with flights. So I believe in free, free speech so much, even though I don't like it, I'm going to leave it. Then one day he decided, I'm going to flip on that. He flipped on it and he banned the guy. And so you had journalists come out and report, hey, here's the story. Elon Musk doesn't like this Elon Jet account. And he ended up banning the Elon Jet account. And then Elon turned around and banned all the reporters who reported on that story. Remember that? And he's talking about suppression of free speech, man. Oh, the suppression of free speech is so bad and so wrong. He rails against the two-tiered system that existed at Twitter, and then he creates a two-tiered system. Remember that? It's got to be equal playing field. Everybody's got to have an equal voice. And then he switches it to, we're going to scrap verification, and we're going to, if you pay $8, you get verified, and you get priority in the algorithm. The number of inconsistencies and hypocrisies and things that flat out don't make sense. Again, I just pointed out to you the, you know, the whole thing about the the uh, Hindu nationalists in India and how Elon is working with them to censor on their behalf. And then he also, he did the Twitter files, which showed, you, you know, collusion between U.S. government and Twitter and all that stuff. And all that stuff is bad and wrong. But the idea that he came in and changed it like a superhero, no. He's doing a lot of, of the same things. And he's, in some instances, ramping up the censorship and the problems. 
And then he comes out here, pretends like he's some sort of hero. And by the way, the point about like, I'm against anything that's anti-meritocratic. Oh, great. So then I take it you're anti-capitalism, right? Look, dude, if it was a meritocracy, you wouldn't have taken billions of dollars of government subsidies. Subsidy, by definition, is anti-meritocratic. It's a handout from the government. So that's the other part about this that drives me crazy is there's a lot of billionaires out there who really think they are God's gift to this earth and they're just the mega geniuses and they're just more worthy than everybody else. No, I got news for you. Under capitalism, some of the hardest working people live in poverty. Some of the hardest working people I ever met work two jobs, three jobs, bust their ass, really good people. And they can barely make ends meet if they can make a meet at all. So you can't take a hit at, you know, say, oh, I'm against anything that's anti-meritocratic, and then be a capitalist. You, you can't do that. Those things do not mix. They do not mix at all. Um, so, you know, those are two of the aspects of the work mind virus that I think are very dangerous, uh, is that it's, it's often anti-meritocratic. You can't, you can't question things. Uh, even the questioning is bad. So... You mean like when people uh, question Elon Musk on Twitter and then, then they, get, they get banned? You mean like that? There's been a lot of people who've been shadow banned. Ken Klippenstein, he was shadow banned because he was doing critical reporting on Elon Musk. Again, all look, all these things I'm bringing up, guys, These are, this is all public knowledge. This has all been reported. This is not hidden. And Bill Maher is still sitting there giving him a smooth hand job and acting like he's God's gift to Earth. Uh, you, know, you know, another way to... Almost anonymous would be, would be cancel culture. And obviously people have tried to cancel you many times. Many. It's the same cancel culture, wokeness, cancel culture, political correctness, whatever you want to call it. They're just saying the same things over and over. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're, every week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from left um, and right. I've had it from both sides. Yeah. And, and it's interesting. <clears throat> people, you and I are both like in that little group of people. Maybe it's a bigger group now. Yeah. Who, who are called conservative, who haven't really changed. Right. I don't see, think of you as a conservative. I'm definitely... Yeah, like, I, I at least think of myself as a moderate, uh, you know, uh, so, I mean, uh, at least, the, like, <laughs> I've spent a massive amount of my life energy building sustainable energy, uh, you know, electric yes. vehicles and, and batteries and solar and stuff uh, to help save the environment. That's, that's, not, that's not a, you know, no, no, no. It's, it's not exactly far right. No, you, you know? drew that diagram. He said, vote for Ron DeSantis. He said, vote for Republicans in the midterms to balance things out. Democrats have had control for too long, so vote for Republicans, and I support Ron DeSantis. But don't call me a conservative. Don't call me a conservative, even though I support an avowed conservative Republican. Guys, just stop with the tap dance. Just own it. Just own it. I would have so much more respect if they were just up front, right? It's like, look, Dave Rubin went around calling himself a classic liberal for years when it was obvious he was just a conservative Republican. And then finally, at some point or another, he was like, okay, yeah, I'm a conservative Republican. It was like, G good. Just be honest about it. Why are you playing hide the ball? There's no reason to play hide the ball. You're just being dishonest and disingenuous with everybody else and with yourself if you come out here to... Bro, people call you conservative? What? How are you conservative in any way, shape, and for or form? Except that you're supporting Ron DeSantis and said vote for Republicans. But other than that, bro, other than that, bro, you say things like, gay people don't suck. Oh, so liberal. <laughs> oh, man. Look out. Uh, you drew that diagram once where you're yeah. here. I, I related to that. And, like, the world has changed. Right. I feel the same way. I feel like very often wokeness is, is not building on liberalism. It's the opposite of liberalism. I can mention yes, exactly. many this examples is... where it's the op including free speech. Free speech is... Again, you can't do the whole free speech, free speech, free speech thing. When he is suppressing free speech at this very moment... But even to the Bill Maher point, I've stayed the same and everybody else has changed and the problem is wokeness. The far left has gone insane. No, Bill. Here's what he doesn't understand. Here's what he doesn't understand. Another big part of this is where you put your focus and concentration, what you spend most of your time on. There's, there's, you can think of this in a number of different ways. What are you nominally on paper? Like, what are you nominally, your politics, versus what are you effectively? Somebody could say, I'm a liberal or I'm a leftist. And if you write down their positions on paper and they say, yeah, I believe these things, maybe they actually are that. But what are you talking about? Where is your focus? What is the impact you're having on the world and other voters if you're a prominent commentator and you have a lot of sway, right? 
And with somebody like Bill Maher, he could swear up and down, I'm still a liberal and I'm a, I'm a leftist or whatever. I don't know what terminology he likes to use these days. But when you spend most of your time and your biggest concern is like wokeness and cancel culture and things of that nature, and all you do is, and by the way, he doesn't even call out like, you know, authoritarian trends on the right. It's, it's the authoritarian trends more on the left. It's the wokeness stuff. If that's what your focus is, I'm going to beat up on the left all day long and focus mostly on this wokeness thing. Well, then you are effectively on the world. You're having an impact, which is the opposite of what you say your politics are, right? You're going to make people more conservative. You're going to make people more Republican. You're going to act like this is the biggest problem. And they literally almost flat out said that, right? They bring that up like right away. And it's like, this is the civilizational issue. Whereas if you really were nominally a liberal or a leftist and effectively a liberal or a leftist, you would spend a hell of a lot more time talking about the problems with political corruption, which has truly, truly destroyed this country. The problems with capitalism, the problem with um, wealth and income inequality, the problem with lack of health care, the problem with homelessness and what we can do to fix that, the problem with wages and lack of unions. If you really are, if you say I'm a leftist or I'm a liberal or however you identify, if your, if, if your message and the things you talk about and the things you cover bolster that point, then yes, you are both nominally and effectively a liberal or a leftist. But for Bill Maher, he could say he's what he is whatever he wants. But at this point in time, when all you talk about is like, isn't the left so extreme? Isn't the left so dumb? Isn't the left so stupid? And isn't wokeness the biggest problem? Well, then you're not actually effectively what you are nominally. Does that make sense to you guys? And it took me a while to develop this this line of thinking, because I used to be more of the belief that like, yeah, no, you are what you say you are, and that's the end of it, right? And it's like, it's a little more complicated than that. It can be true that you are what you say you are politically, but your impact on the body politic and how, and your, what you do effectively could be totally different, right? And when you say, oh, I'm a liberal, I've always been a liberal, I'm a liberal, I'm a liberal, I'm a liberal, but then you're telling people to vote for Ron DeSantis and vote for Republicans to balance things out. Effectively, you're not really a liberal now, are you? So it's just, they have a very childish, really dumb view of politics, it seems to me. Now, you might say that's harsh or whatever. No, I think it's like, this is the kind of commentary that, like, your dumb uncle who never even reads articles or learns about the world, it's like their political insight, right? It's like they sit back all smugly at the Thanksgiving dinner table after downing a bunch of uh, turkey and stuffing. They're like, you know, man... Pfft, there's crazy people over here, and there's crazy people over here, and me, I'm just like, I'm just like the reasonable one who's like in the middle, bro. And it's like, that's just lazy. <laughs> like, that's just lazy. That's just like, I've done no work, I've done no reading, I've done no critical thinking, and I'm just going to default to like, I'm in the enlightened center and stuff, bro. And if you don't agree with me, maybe you're the, maybe you're the dumb one too, you know what I'm saying? And this is the sense I get from them. You know, it's very, it's smug, it's arrogant, it's it's so cocksure, and they can't even fathom that, like, based on their actions and based on the majority of their focus, that some people might say they're a little more conservative now. Now, in the case of Bill, I don't think he's nearly as conservative as Elon, but I think they're both sort of flirting. Bill's become more of an enlightened centrist, and Elon is more of a center-right kind of guy now. But it's just, it's annoying to me that they, like, they don't take their critics seriously. They just think they're all idiots, they're all crazy, you know what I mean? Like, and their critics actually make some good points, right? So, anyway, there you have it. Oh, one more piece of this that I'll show you, because you need to, this goes on for the whole interview, and we need to, we need to end on this one. You ready? Listen. Because, yeah. uh, look, yeah, I mean, geniuses are going to be a little quirky sometimes, but you, yeah. your heart is always in the right place. You were trying to fix this world, and, look, I could talk to you to you forever we can't today i'd love to get high with you i know a great place to do it <laughs> but i can't tell you how much i appreciate you i know you have a lot of choices and places you can go thank you elon right. musk thank ladies you. and gentlemen all right i'll see you soon elon it's the most smitten i've ever seen bill maher in my life with a guest the most taken by a guest he's ever been and then by the way elon i think was supposed to stay for overtime after the show he left early and the bill goes out there and says oh it's okay elon had to go save the world and he like meant it sincerely he couldn't come in overtime he's got more important things to do your heart's always in the right place, good sir. This is not the skepticism that Bill Maher normally brings to everybody else in the body politic. It, it, honestly, it's embarrassing. You guys get the gist of it. I've been talking for way too long, but uh, I feel like I need a shower after watching that. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. 
Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop, and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.